you can see the progression in people's thinking from conversations we've had with them in the past. You see that growth, that development. I take great joy in this. It's very, very pleasurable to see people feeling good, making moves, and coming along. here just two we are two yeah with graham on looking yeah michael starts his road trip tomorrow and is is packing and and getting ready and couldn't couldn't set up a rig tonight because he's got a lot going on loading a car to to head across the country and john is working yeah john's in session recording like a recording engineer yeah something he hasn't been in quite a while Uh uh-huh um, so, Which is exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just two at the table. And it, uh, it's good. What's going on with you? I don't, uh, you know, when we were talking earlier about what should we do that's different, mm-hmm. um, I was like thinking about when, our, when we used to do this on the phone without recording it. Mm. It was the two of us grinding away like, <laughs> you know, three years ago. Uh-huh kind of going in like what are we doing Mm -hmm. what should we do yeah you're so much more interesting than the world knows about (laughs) (laughs) Uh (laughs) to each other yeah you know and we started this this practice of unpacking and dot connecting and yes trying to unlock each other's capabilities and Mm -hmm. inspire each other to look bigger in a in a realistic way. Yeah. You know, to sort of push the limits of what's possible and at the same time take pragmatic steps. Mm-hmm. So to be able to zoom out and zoom back in. Yes. Long term, short term. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, we get to kind of finally record like <laughs> what that was like. <laughs> One of those phone calls, yeah. Yeah, yeah they were, they were. Um... It's like extra, it's like getting together for jujitsu or something. It's like you sort of repeat and elaborate on themes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was very it was very important. We did a lot of you know, I I've often said here on Mike that that once you get the software upgrade to a new idea or a new way of seeing things, it's hard to remember yeah. how you how you were before. It's hard to it's hard to sort of inhabit that place again where you had a misconception or a um you know, a lack of perspective on something. Not that we're Mm-hmm. Like we've arrived, that we're realized beings, but mm-hmm. there are things we're better at now than we were when we started talking. Sure. And it's hard to remember what what it was that we were, you know, to sort of get a, a sense of the totality of the work that we've done. Mm-hmm. But I know it's significant because the 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 uh, the reality of our lives is quite different. Yes. You know what I mean? And yeah. and, and and the trajectory is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I now, mean, I look at it at where we were when we started working together we were we were in our respective little boats and we were being moved around by the current mm-hmm. and we were like bro you should probably be rowing in a direction <laughs> just yes. row the boat you know mm-hmm. take control mm-hmm. start guiding this driving this yeah um i think the the Something that we that we have in common that has probably gotten us in trouble individually and collectively more than once is a sort of commitment to um, the truth as as best we you know we can understand it or or grab hold of it, and even when it's not happy or healthy or um, pleasant, mm-hmm. the truth about a mix or the tr- truth mm-hmm. about something we did, mm-hmm. a piece of work mm-hmm. or. Um, the, the you know the outcome of a project or mm-hmm. a, or you ask a difficult question and the answer is not comfortable and um, we're both I think that's something that we had in common yeah. uh, you know at that sort of um, early on it was kind of like oh this guy's not a kind of internal to... brutality yes <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, like a, yeah. I, I yeah that's I mean, why I think the jujitsu thing applies because yeah. there's some pain involved mm-hmm. in looking at 
unpleasant things yes about oneself or whatever. yeah yeah we would say yeah i think on a good day we'd call it rigor but just that commitment to like you know i yeah i was thinking about it today with i had a really great um call well i had three or four really great calls yesterday but um so our i'll come back to it but one of the people I spoke to was Gerhard uh, mm-hmm. Westphalen, uh, who's one of our listeners, might be might be with us live tonight. Um, and Gerhard is young, mastering engineer, technical guy, sort of interested in a lot of the things that I have been interested in, in, interested in speaker design and acoustics and and how things work. And and uh, we were talking about something, and and uh, he referenced something that you know talking about the sound of a piece of equipment say mm. and he referenced an opinion from someone who who i have a sort of a long history with and mm. and whose opinion i don't respect and um, for various reasons and um, and then it was like well wait a second like the list of people whose listening notes i would take is so short uh, you know what yeah, i mean yeah, that kind yeah, of like yeah. like at I would really take, like, if someone says, this is good, and I would bet money on it, it's like, it's a short, short list. Mm. You know, of people I, you actually know, or people pe- you would imagine? People that I know, yeah. yeah, yeah who, you know, yeah. who could say, I heard this, it's yeah, good. Yeah. You know, it's very, I'm I'm sort of like, that, that rigor, or, you know, as some, you know, other voices might say, it's it's overly critical or whatever, but that, I have to verify it for myself. I have to, yeah. I have to put my ears on it. I have to know as as close to first principles as I can, why, what's, you know, yeah. you know, it seems like it's good, but I don't know until I, hmm. until I know. Hmm. And the list of... Reserving judgment is a good habit, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think from a, yeah. from a, on an emotional musical level, I would trust your opinion. And on a, on a technical level, it's Dave, hmm. because we just hear things. Dave Collins. Dave Collins, yeah. yeah who's people. Who's... Yeah who's really been a mentor to me over the last 10 years since I got to know him when I moved to LA um, and and in this very low-key way, you know, just by, he's just there and available and open to me uh, whenever he doesn't say you should. Mm. It's kind of like, he's just doing his thing and he'll answer a a, a good question. Mm. Um, Benefits of proximity. Yeah, yeah. And maybe raise an eyebrow, you know, over the years, like, Mm -hmm. hmm, you're doing that, hmm. (laughs) <laughs> you know, that seems, that seems a little complex, mm-hmm. which now I'm living yeah. out, you know, uh-huh. with other, with other people. Mm. Um, so yeah, that, that, um, but I think discovering that of like, oh, okay, so this guy's not going to bullshit me. Mm. Cause you get the like, but you're so talented. Oh, but you know, like yeah. you're as good I've as anyone, bro. I, and it's I've, like, yeah. are you, have you listened to Tom Coyne's work? I'm not like mm. as good as Tom Coyne. I'm not, mm. I'm not even in the same universe yet. Mm. So don't like, I like that you're, you're my cheerleader, mythical person, notional person, but you're not being honest with me. Yeah. I don't need a and fairy it, tale. It's not to, useful to, to me. That. Yeah. 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 Um, the encouragement is, you know, what, what, what does matter is when someone chooses me over, you know, I, I have clients and friends who have the option to bring in Sterling and will choose me like, you know. Or, or, or even have fought for me against, with a label of like, no, we want to use this guy. That matters a lot. That's like, that's the rubber meeting the road. Yeah. But the kind of like, oh, man, you're the best, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's nice, but it's not. So I think when I, when I met you, well, I met you a long time ago, you know, early on when you were with Tony. In, Tony's, in, yeah. um, Putting North in the BB5 rig, I posted my PMC origin story yes, on Instagram yeah. with a little video of that day yeah, with the young Rory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a, that was a long time ago. Um, in all sorts of ways. Yeah. But yeah, when I when I got to know you and it's sort of like, oh, this guy's gonna gonna go there. That that sort of had a lot of value for me, you know, mm-hmm. it made, it meant a lot because it was like, and also it, it just meant we could, we could go there on a difficult question about something general or something specific to one or other of us, mm. not resolve it and leave the call and then come back to it the next time we got on the phone with maybe some new insight or maybe not, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like, oh, we've got to tie up every conversation with a nice bow at the end, <laughs> you know, because... Even, the, even though that is the aim. And this is a thing yeah. that... that it's a it's a 
It sort of happened spontaneously when I was in high school toward the... So I went to private school until... Uh, a religious, a private religious school until the third week of 10th grade when my parents decided we were going to take a different financial direction mm -hmm. as a family. And they pulled us all from private school that week, mm -hmm. three weeks into the year, which was my sophomore year. Wow. And dropped right into like public school. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't know a lot of the kids I grew up with. Mm -hmm. But I made a connection over music with... Um, with a few um, dudes who were in my class, um, by the end of junior year, it was I think it was the, actually the last day of sophomore year where um, I just met them in a gymnasium. I hadn't met them before the whole year. Mm. Um, and um, John Golden, who is now a counselor, um, clinical um, therapist, and my friend Bill McClear, who... Um, He's in like uh, enterprise software and um, he's, uh, I don't know, I, I think of him as the great entertainer of, of uh, enterprise technology. <laughs> he's like a whiner and diner. Right. You know, um, epic good time, mm -hmm. Bill, Bill McClear and, uh, and our other friend, um, Matt Carl. And the three of us and maybe a few others would, we'd hang out late night anywhere in a parking lot. Um, you know, like um, sitting on the uh, there were tire gyms in a lot of the uh, elementary schools. I don't know if Graham, if you had these in Texas. What is that? You take a bunch of old truck tires and you build like things for kids to play around mm. in um, structures and mm. such, and they're all bolted together. And wow, like, it's kind of a way of repurposing mm -hmm. old, old things, and um, you know, you sit up on those or up on the monkey bar stuff or whatever, and we would have these kinds of philosophical conversations. Mm. And if we distilled down to like a single statement, it's like, we'd all be like, there it is. And like, nice head home. You yeah. know, it was this kind of natural occurrence was to sort of distill, distill, distill. To hone it down. Yeah. And so when I, when I, when I met you, that was the first time I felt that kind of partnership in, in that sort of discussion in that way, because this is also like a family tradition of mine. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what was happening around the table, but in a, in a kind of, um, the standards for the quality of argument were that high mm. in the religious context. You know, there was a lot of faulty reasoning and, mm. and um, I always found that very unsatisfying and frustrating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and yeah, so when we started doing it, you know, I had this sort of relationship with, um, Chris Tabaron, mm -hmm. um, there've been a few, um, but with you, it was, it felt like a fit, like a very, um, there was parody, mm -hmm. you know, we were, it felt very mutual mm -hmm. and, um, it felt very much like close to equal value on balance between the two of us, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and I remember I started telling people that like you were my producer. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know, I'm I, like it, a producer, and like Rory's unlocking me, and like yes. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, even with John, I mean, you know, John, you know, he was 25 when we met, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm like over 10 years older than John, and you know, we've had this kind of relationship this whole time, but it just has a very different dynamic. Yeah. You know, and obviously yeah. it's valuable to me and keep doing it. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, it's just valuable in a different way. Yeah, same, same. I mean, yeah, that's true for me and John and 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 Michael and I too. There's there's a there's a different rhythm to each of the relationships yeah. and, and sort of a different um and and all developing I I would say in really positive useful ways but all sort of growing in different sort of directions you know they're they're all i would consider the sort of the the leveling up that michael and i are doing is different to the leveling up that john and mm -hmm. i are doing is different to what you and i are doing yeah and and all really valuable and useful to me you know yeah um yeah i think it's i mean i i haven't thought about the fact that we did this kind of late by by most people's standards, I mean, sort of this, 
this digging in, I'm thinking of like, okay, so this is two dudes talking about mm, sort of getting to know each other and how valuable it's been to us in terms of our work and our understanding of ourselves of sort, sort of, I think something that we've both been very good at is pointing out where the other is strong that maybe they weren't as as clear on or had maybe lost touch with or whatever you know it's like no you're good at this like you you know when we do this together you take care of this thing because you're good at it yeah this is your strength mm -hmm. you know and we'll sort of defer to each other back and forth like oh this is a this is a taste question talk to spider you know like there like yeah i've got opinions and i can help and you know but i'll defer to him on this and and we'll go back and forth on on stuff like that and sort of presenting each other to other people, sort of introducing each other to other people with a with our language about the other has been very... Mm -hmm. So you hear that over and over. I hear you describe me and I'm like, that guy sounds all right. <laughs> sounds better than who I think I am. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, occasionally it's like the penny drops. It's like, fuck, we have been around for a minute. We have seen some stuff. Yeah. And... You know, I think there's there's been a weird transition for me from like feeling like an outsider or feeling like the guy from the small town who sort of arrived in LA too late, you know, to sort of increasingly being in situations where it's like, oh, yeah, we have we have something to offer here. We have we have real experience. And not just because it's with people with, you know, names or whatever. Yeah. But we have really reps across Yeah, first hand. First hand reps on in, in sort of multiple domains. Mm -hmm. You know, I was talking with um, Dylan, maybe, I don't know, ago, a month or so ago, some, who came up? It was um, the guy from Pulp, Jarvis Cocker. Uh -huh. Someone mentioned him in one of our group threads and I said, oh, I did, I did a, a live thing, a TV thing with him or two. And, um, and he was great. Like he was really uh, like way better performer um, and actually probably the biggest, one of the biggest live shows I ever did with my band was supporting mm. um, Pulp, um, you know, with one of the bands that I was in uh, on, a, on a big stage, like a big, big crowd. And, um, but I dug out the video and, and sent it to Dylan of, of one of the performances that he had done that I was involved in. And Dylan and I were just going back and forth about that experience of watching bands from the side of the stage. Yeah. So in my, in my role, it was sort of production manager, stage manager, Dylan, it was doing monitors and, and maybe you're doing monitors for the support act or the main act, but you're watching the other act. Mm. But just watching over and over these musical conversations mm. um, and raw, unmediated conversations, you're, you're, you're not even in the crowd. So even, mm. like we've all been to a gig where the band are on, but the crowd is not. Mm -hmm. Like the crowd has a funky, weird energy. It's like, I don't know, it was raining out. and Or it was New uh, York City. The, or, yeah, they made people line up too long. Or yeah, it was just <laughs> New York. Uh, but whatever that thing, when you're at the side of stage, you get this sort of unmediated kind mm -hmm. of intimate view of the thing. Mm -hmm. And you get to see sound check and you get to... I always thought it was strange to see, a, you know, a big concert to actually see their feet on the ground anyone on stage to actually see their feet on the ground, mm. like from the balcony at Hammerstein Ballroom or like wherever you are. I always found that sort of demystifying and yes. strange. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could yeah. see that. Yeah. yeah. But we were just going back and forth on what we learned in those situations. And it's like, I have all these reps in that sort of domain mm. that that if you said to me, oh, so you, you master records. And it's like, well, I wouldn't have seen the value of that stuff quite as much maybe five or ten years ago and it's it's been part of this sort of mm -hmm. process that we've been doing of of i think we've both been committed to like integrating integrating the strands of our lives mm. so you know for me it's like the idea that sort of the folk music traditional music part of my life could could sort of re-emerge in la as mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. as an asset as a source of inspiration as a source of inspiration as understanding, a understanding yeah. that's really interesting mm -hmm. you know i would i never would have denied it but i certainly wouldn't have led with it that's in, the equivalent in, of church life in my life exactly you know yeah. kind of re-emerging as a yeah. valuable thing yeah. and sort of and and i think that you know i think it would be fair to say that we both got to a place around when we met each other or when we really got to know each other where we were kind of like hmm time's getting on 
and we're not satisfied with our place. We're not satisfied with the with the impact we're having. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And of course, we would like to make more money. And and but and and you sort of there's a there's a framing of that moment, that realization where you say, "We've wasted this time. Mm. It's gone now. Like I can't go back and intern with." the guy at Sterling when I'm 22 because I'm it's gone that time is gone yeah, yeah. and I think what we did increasingly consciously was to integrate our histories and sort of uncover and and shine a light on the value of of all of these experiences and how we could integrate them into an understanding of ourselves. I mean, reigniting a kind of imagination for possible futures. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, and and out of it sort of is emerging a kind of a sense of um of of vocation really that that is surprising to me. You know, and mm. and I would say it's it's you know, built on the back of our conversations and our work together and being in rooms together, listening, working, talking, unlocking stuff with people, for people. Mm. And then the, the podcast, but it's sort of surprising to me where where I'm ending up with this. Like, mm. the, if you had told me at 10 years ago that I would sort of be an advocate for artfulness or poetry or... Um, truth, God forbid. Truth, <laughs> truth in music and... <laughs> And this sort of, the value of these intangibles, it just would have seemed unlikely, I think, is 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 f fair to say. You know, I, I wouldn't, there's a sort of a, a role emerging for me or in me that's surprising to me, mm. you know? Mm. Um, and it's not by any means complete, but it's it's surprising, you know? Mm. And it's, it's um, it doesn't feel alien, it doesn't feel wrong or, or ill-fitting. But it 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 is um, it's not where I thought things were headed, mm. you know, and I'm glad of that. I'm I'm happy that that it's not that, you know. Mm. I'm I'm happy to be surprised and sort of want more of that, you know. Mm. I mean, one of the things I'm I'm happy has become more central to what I do is um, shepherding people into a better situation. Mm -hmm. Um, a real commitment to um, creative freedom mm -hmm. and the experience of others in yes. in the act of yeah. creating. And there's there's a thing, you know, people engage us because, you know, we've we have a reputation for unlocking productivity, enthusiasm, inspiration, yada yada for people making records and people tell people, um, people hear the podcast, people see us on Instagram, um, uh, YouTube video of our interview up here with John mm -hmm. from over a year ago now, um, the last live attended conversations engineers meet up. Mm -hmm. um, People come to us different ways, and we t and we we're talking them through a process. But it isn't until like today, um, we had an epic um, mm. sort of monitoring demo at the PMC studio mm -hmm. um, with a with a client, and um, it is. Um, it isn't until people actually experience the thing that they haven't experienced before when they, when the music takes over their body mm -hmm. and you see that for the first time that it's like, okay, we got them here. You know, it's mm -hmm. like we were able to build enough trust to guide them to this level. Now we know what's possible. I, I, just, I just think the, it is so intangible you know, we have theories, we have a kind of philosophy, rather, around monitoring um, what it is, what it isn't, mm -hmm. the fact that it's a skill and people don't think of it that way. Mm -hmm. It's a thing you can get better at. Um, it takes repetition. It's training, right? It's just like any other skill. Um, uh and you can talk about that philosophy and it can really land with people, but it isn't until the music 
really reaches them at a deep level. I mean, you play, you played that J. Cole track today. What <laughs> what's that one called? Um 1985 something the intro. Uh, I mean, it, I, I thought today, I, I mean, after our after the demo today, I was like we should do a playlist based on personalities. Mm, like where yes. the human is really spotlit. Mm. Like that J. Cole thing, like that um it brought me to tears today. The um uh, what's her name? Kate. Kate. Um, Holy Elixir. Kate Tempest. Kate Tempest. Jesus yeah. Christ! It's a masterpiece. Yeah, it's really, really a strong. poetic masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Um, Justin, it's it's when <laughs> it's just so rewarding and pleasurable to illuminate like how powerful music can be and to demonstrate it for mm. people and and for people to have these sort of like almost born again experiences it's like oh yes. this is what music is mm. it's this complex it's this deep i mean when you played the ethan gruska track it was like yeah i'd heard it before mm -hmm. i mean i heard it at home i hear heard it on my airpod pros which is quite nice mm -hmm. But there was so much interplay. It was yeah. so, it was, uh, what did I say? It was like aesthetic overwhelm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, 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 it inspires a kind of sense of awe. Mm -hmm. It's just so, it's beautiful in a way you can't understand. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, and so bringing people to that, you mm -hmm. know, I think is a lot of people don't make it to that point. Like they're just thinking in ways like we, we don't establish the trust with certain people. And um, I don't know, a, a little bit of a tangent, but I, I, I just find that this shepherding role, it's not really how I imagined my life going right. like 20 years ago. Th this, is, I mean? this is what it's I mean. Like, it's yeah. th this, this sort of emergent thing, and I don't think we're by any means done, you know, but this, th these sort of, these things we're doing, they're surprising to me. You know, it it's sort of, um, you know, as I say, the idea that I would be an advocate for the things that we talked about earlier, it's like to, to young sort of principled technical me, I think I abandoned that stuff at a young age. I sort of, I, I lost touch with it. Yeah. Um, and then I sort of, what happened, you know, because of, because of family situations and because I, I had, was sort of forced to stay in Ireland, sort of let go of creative ambitions and then sort of rationalized it a lot over time. And that sort of calcified and, and became a, I mean, it was true. I, I, and is true. I'm good at technical things. I am a good, um, you know, sort of objective, I have a good objective viewpoint of, of things, Sonic. Hmm. Um, but I was ignoring this sort of part of myself, I think. Hmm. I'd sort of, and, and had made excuses for why, hmm. you know. So, this this rediscovery is is uh, surprising and interesting and kind of sometimes overwhelming, you know, mm -hmm. because it sort of makes the ground feel much less certain. Mm -hmm. But it's actually it's actually exciting, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean the the rewards that come. Like I've been. When I was 19, I had my first paid, produ you know, as a producer engineer, I had my first client. Mm. And I had also already been doing my own recordings for like 10 years at that point, mm -hmm. more. Like I started very young with a cassette recorder, just doing recordings. Mm. And um, uh, so I had these parallel tracks where I was writing songs, singing, playing all the instruments, recording everything, you know, just sort of solitary effort. And then making money, um, recording local, whatever, mm -hmm. R&B, rap artists, country, cover mm -hmm. bands, like whatever the fuck, right? And there was this great sort of exchange of energy there where people were attracted to coming to me and working in our, in our studio um, because of my artist stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was gaining all this perspective and much better at synthesizing musical ideas um, 
as a result of working with a, a great diversity of mm. other kinds of artists. Um, and so, you know, I've been kind of the one, even since I was in bands in high school, that people would ask for advice about mm -hmm. what guitar to get or what pedals yes. or like how to spend this 800 bucks. And, you know, um, so I've kind of had that advisory role, but I think like now that I've been around a, a short minute, um, there have been enough people that I've um, helped who have grown. Mm. You know, so like the great pleasure that I get from seeing people progress, even in these last short couple of years, like mm -hmm. working with PMC, like the kinds of trajectory some of our clients are on, it's just insane. It's really, it's so, it's like, really impressive. Yeah. It's such a powerful force that I didn't, I mean, other people's well being and, and success is something I've always taken pleasure in, but it just gets deeper, it gets richer. Mm hmm. I don't, I don't know how to explain that part of it, but mm -hmm. that's one of the surprises. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the last week we did the um, our first AMA type episode. Yes, and we had six or seven listeners, community members, friends um, send us their thoughts, and we jammed on them, and it was kind of um, a very similar thing. Like you can see the progression in people's thinking mm -hmm. from conversations we've had with them in the past. You see that growth, that development. I take great joy in this. Mm -hmm. It's very, very pleasurable to see people feeling good, making moves, mm -hmm. and coming along. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. It's It's been... Uh, it's amazing how you know, when, once you sort of unlock or untether talented people, how quickly they can make progress, you know, because it's not, it's not for lack of trying or lack of willpower or lack of, of ability or talent. It's, they're just fighting, they're sort of fighting bad monitoring often or, or bad ideas about what it is they should be doing, mm -hmm. you know, which is, which has increasingly become a part of our work of helping people sort of straighten out their their ideas of their role or self-image or mm. what kind, how they want to use their studio or what it is there. Even, even the sort of, uh, as we've discussed on here before, like the, the tension between sort of being the local guy or, or moving to the city, moving to mm -hmm. wherever. Mm -hmm. This biggest city in your state or the biggest, you know, LA, New York, Atlanta, Nashville, whatever, uh, or Paris, London, you know, Madrid, whatever, wherever you are, that sort of, should I, should I stay where I'm at with my, with near my mom and dad and my wife's mom and dad and, and we have the kids and they're in preschool and everything is good or should I, mm. should I go here and try this thing, you know? Mm. And um, it's, you know, so increasingly we're sort of helping people with those kinds of problems um, not just sort of acoustic problems. and Yeah, the workshops, and, we start all of our studio design or, you mm. know, sort of panel upgrade projects with a workshop mm -hmm. it's 45 minutes to an hour and a half sometimes mm -hmm. <laughs> depending mm -hmm. on the complexity um yeah and, and they <laughs> they do kind of they take they take on a very human quality because you find out where the need really is mm -hmm. and you try to address it um and maybe the studio upgrade is down the road yeah you know uh, maybe yeah. there's work to do before that makes sense. You know, maybe there's a move to LA from Nashville or maybe there's, yes, you know, some, some money juggling to do or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I wonder, I wonder like the, <laughs> it was interesting today, like you and I have not done a kind of like, hey, come let us play some records on the big PMCs in a nice room and show you what's possible thing in a minute. Mm -hmm. And doing that today, like seeing you talking about music, um, about what monitoring is and what it means, um, how it can serve creativity and how it can fuck with creativity. Mm -hmm. Um 
For instance, if a room is introducing a technical problem, it takes you out of an artistic mindset and into a technical one. Mm -hmm. It's so so basic. Yeah, it's so basic, but it's if your if your orientation around audio engineering is a technical framework, then you're you're missing the point. Mm -hmm. You know, you you the it's and this is the thing where. I think my the area of frustration that I have is that we sometimes when when we have the resources and the leeway we can have a profound impact on people's experience making records right mm-hmm. in a positive way and there's a great gratitude for it mm-hmm. right um uh, from the clients and their collaborators. And then it's like there's this whole cultural milieu that is in a way, dis- it's it obscures the underlying facts and the underlying philosophy. Um, it's a kind of um, headwind mm-hmm. or, you know, or like, I don't even, there's probably better meta, uh, analogy or metaphor. I think the the frustration comes, I think, like of seeing the sort of, I don't want to say injustice is maybe too strong a word, mm-hmm. but the there's this sort of like um, I mean, I think it was last week or the week before when we were like, who of all the rooms Rory and I have been to, how many couldn't use improvement when mm-hmm. we walked in? It was like, well, basically none. Mm-hmm. Like we've been to almost no rooms that couldn't use an upgrade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and And consequently, like so many engineers, producers who engineer, artists who engineer their own stuff, they're sort of stuck in this very early stage of the engineering arc as a craft. Mm. It's like they they never quite get their sea legs and reach that level of stability and calm about engineering. Mm. It's always like this sort of struggle. Yes. At various levels of intensity. Um, and, And... People, you see uh, people with the resources um, to have an impact who just aren't plugged into the ideas. Mm -hmm. And so you see the resources misplaced and misspent and the frustrations grow. And um, I would really love to bring a greater awareness to the kind of experience that our clients are having to a broader yeah subset of the of the of the audio engineering world cuz it's it's just so fundamental and i think about like when i was 19 working on my event 2020 active joints in a tiny ass bedroom at I mean, least the smaller ones i was on i mean at a that closet yeah, yeah i had those too but they didn't last long in a, in a 10 maybe 10 or 11 by 12 by 8 brutal. room. Fucking brutal. My brother's bedroom in his house. Yeah, this was yeah. half the size of that. Mm-hmm. I don't even think it was a bedroom, to be mm-hmm. honest. <laughs> Victorian, old Victorian house in we Woodbury, New Jersey. Uphill both ways to school. <laughs> <laughs> walked. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, uh, but I think if like if I just had the requisite knowledge, I could be like, yo, I'll sleep in this tiny room and like set up in this other room and mm-hmm. I'll get these panels in these places. And like, it's actually not crazy, outrageous. Like it's a few grand mm-hmm. in materials yeah. and some time and just the knowledge to put the speakers in the best place, right and, place and, yeah. the, and the panels in mm-hmm. the best places for what you have. It's like, it's so fundamental to the feedback loop that is creativity. We were talking about our client today and the idea of artists. I mean, my experience as an artist is one of a kind of perpetual inspiration where you're inspiring yourself by the thing you just did. Mm-hmm. And and the reward of like 
I don't know where that came from, but that's fucking sick. Mm -hmm. And then just the pleasure of that, just propelling you on to the next, mm -hmm. the next piece of inspiration. Pure um, play. And how monitoring is in the middle. It's mm -hmm. like if, well, where's the feedback loop? Okay, neural event, fingers move on an instrument, the mechanics of a piano say, then there's a microphone and into a preamp, into a converter, through the interface chain, into the DAW, back out to the DAC, you know, out the monitor controller, into the speakers, into the room, then back into the, into the nervous system. And so what is the, what is the argument for putting distortions and like, what's the argument for putting a funhouse mirror in that, Mm -hmm. in that loop mm -hmm. you know it's if i was thinking about that when i was 19 and i had the ability to monitor who knows what my trajectory would have been mm -hmm. you know it's it just seems like such um compounding effects yes of getting your bearings as an engineer even if you're an artist that's just doing home shit mm -hmm. like getting your bearings what does that mean in terms of your creative output like building equity in a catalog, mm -hmm. like over years, you know what I mean? What is yeah. the compounding effect? Um, or even at mix engineers, like mm -hmm. your, what's the difference of like, okay, there's a 19 year old me in Southern New Jersey and I just stay an owner operator of like a home built studio mm -hmm. and I work with local talent. Um, or I, I'm, I'm that same 19 year old in South Jersey and I get an internship with Tony Moss and I'm working on fucking Destiny's Child mm -hmm. and then Beyonce records and whatever, right? I'm exposed to great performances. I'm, I'm working in studios. Well, I don't love the big flagship studios acoustically. Mm -hmm. um, that's not really, not really making the monitoring point here, but it's, it's a point about growth and the compounding effects of being exposed to great performances young. Like mm -hmm. seeing, like I remember I walked into the the, studio, the Hit Factory um, to visit Tony and um, uh, Teresa LaBarbera White's, who um, Beyonce's A and R, mm -hmm. and um, I walk in. They're mixing Crazy in Love. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like just a few tracks and the samples and the kick drum and whatever, and then the vocals. And it was like this little part of the SSL, mm -hmm. <laughs> like 12, 16 tracks or whatever. And, you know, and you're just like, this is fucking great. Mm -hmm. Whatever this is, this is some new shit. Mm -hmm. The fill is the beat. I'm with it. Fucking Rich Harrison just, he just it. sort of reinvented yeah. it. He invented a thing, you know? It's, and yeah. when you're exposed to that when you're young... Um, you know, now you have that to build on, not the mm -hmm. terrible performance or mm -hmm. even the mediocre performance of like, you know, someone who's local to you in the middle of nowhere. Maybe a hobbyist or whatever. Yeah. 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 I mean, and then, you know, oh, you got to redo the bass part when the, when they <laughs> leave, like mm -hmm. not tell the band members and the kind of shit we would do to get the, mm -hmm. get the records to function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what does it mean to like be fixing for 10 years mm -hmm. as opposed to mixing things that don't need to be fixed for 10 years? Like what are the compounding effects on your career at, or just the craft, mm -hmm. you know, um, the quality of your craft? Um, I think it's a, a huge question. And, and I think for many people, there's two, two sort of dynamics at play. One is the sort of sunk cost thing. Well, it's like, well, I've bought all this gear and I've, I've attached myself to these ideas about whatever, room correction or this or that or these plugins on the bus or these workflows or, you know. Um, and the other is looking at their peers who are often equally lost. Um, so looking around or worse, looking to pros who are sort of um, these unicorns of ability who are mixing in janky rooms on janky speakers or uh, talking about sort of exceptional workflows as though they're the norm. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's a very, there's a very um, specific example in the mastering world of this guy who, 
who uh, wrote a book about mastering and, and his his viewpoint on mastering is so sort of odd and singular it would make it sound like it's good but it's it's definitely <laughs> unique and he sort of generalized that and was like this is what mastering is it's like no 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 that's that fussy super ornate way of doing things is your way of doing it that's not what's being done on the records that we're listening to mm. and we haven't heard any of your records mm. so you know you have this the, the the problem of people being attached to the as I say, the sunk cost thing of attached to the gear ideas that they've maybe spent 10 years on, hmm. looking to their peers who often are lost, and then looking to pros who are communicating bad bad messages. Like I, I um, asked her to song recently, I think I mentioned this one night for, for a client. It was like it had a lot of problems, new client and um, older guy and self-mixing and he was really happy with the mix, you know, and it was quite problematic. But he referenced, you know, someone that I know well, a, a, a very well-known mixer, and was like, yeah, I learned all these techniques from this person. And it's like, you know, that's just bad advice. I, and I don't care that it's coming from one of my friends. It's like, it's bad yeah. advice. Yeah. That's too much stuff on the bus. That kind of distortion that late in the game is not, well, yeah. not, not and <laughs> certainly not on a folk, like folky, jazzy thing, you know? Um, so it's hard. It's a, it's a, it's a noisy, it's a noisy field. And I think like what we did this morning with a client is to sort of backtrack, um, and, and without betraying any confidence, this client is, is involved in a, in a potentially incredible project to develop a studio. And in our workshop, we, one of our standard questions now is what's the best thing you've ever heard? Describe the best sonic experience you've ever had mm. and you know on a empire state level scale this guy had been to the 10th floor and it's like no there's there's more mm -hmm. there's more up here and it's not a, a judgment in any way that's mm. like there was a there was a time when i'd been to the 10th floor and then i got yeah. i got a lift to the 15th and then over time you have these experiences where you hear yeah you hear new things or like hearing an orchestra in person right these are all these are all levels, you know, being on the stage between a, between a band when they're sound checking or whatever, like a really good band, mm. there are levels of experience, of physicality. Mm. Um, so we were very deliberate this morning in that we were, we were helping someone experience, if not the tippy top of the building, then, then certainly way up, you mm -hmm. know, um, and of course, once someone has heard that they need it and they want it and and then, if, you know, on top of that, what we're doing is saying, we're excited about what you're capable of with this. It's not like, um, come and look at, the, at, at this mountain, it's impressive. Mm -hmm. It's like, once you have this access to the music, we think you can do cool stuff. Like, we expect it of you, we hope it for you. Yeah. We're excited about it. It isn't just a kind of, like you buy the Ferrari and then you have the Ferrari. It's like, no, it's it's the experience, you know, of using this thing. You're going to create things that will be useful to the world, mm -hmm. that will be, you know, without getting metaphysical, maybe <laughs> important to the world or healing to the world or yeah. uh, healing for you or the artists you're working with. You know, they're, mm. th th you know, this is, like I said, this language that, that I'm surprising myself with. But, you know, I, I believe it. You know yeah. where 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 we're at right now. You know, I don't know that. I don't know that there's that music has been needed more. Mm. You know, mm. in, in at least in recent history. You know, this access to the power of it, just as an antidote to sort of this moment of where we're at. This noise. Yeah, we have profound social challenges. The, 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 just the emotional, the, despite the, all the great it, improvement in the world. Yeah, you know. The, the stimulation, the emotional, um, you know, as Yuval Noah Harari would put it, the fact that we've been hacked, mm. that our brains are now vulnerable to control by mm -hmm. our emotions, our, our, our whole f bodies are, are potentially under the control of different actors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some of whom have agendas, some of whom just want money, but, but whatever, mm -hmm. it's not healthy. And uh, and just the, the the sheer noisiness of the world, the pace of the world, um, the 
the information overload that comes from getting all the news from all the places all the time, mm-hmm. you know, uh, for for a body and a mind that's not evolved to to handle that kind of level of information. Yeah, I've been really hungry for ins- inspir- inspiration and information mm-hmm. for, God, many, many years. Um, really, I think the, as my creative output waned, it was that time and effort was replaced with input Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) and taking things in. And I've just been, oh God, I mean, on a 20 year discovery journey Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, to empower myself to um, direct what I, I have a kind of intense kind of energy for progress in my life. I have a very powerful drive. Um, I've made the mistake of trying to, <laughs> trying to steer myself in other directions. It mm-hmm. just doesn't work. It's not what I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, um, the, the kind of, I think I'm, this is the first time that I remember where that, you know, I've been sort of, like I said, at dinner gorging on information Mm -hmm. and it's been so powerful and interesting and stimulating and bringing things to you guys is always very rewarding. Um, The way it informs um, work with clients and Mm -hmm. at at all different levels, it's, uh, but right now I'm finally at a point where nothing else is going in. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's like I put on a podcast and I'm like, those are words. I hear words. (laughs) You're full. Dave Chappelle, yeah. you're funny as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not integrating anymore. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I'm just, I didn't imagine I'd find myself here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been enjoying silence at home. Mm-hmm. And usually I I sort of fill the day with something. Mm-hmm. There's always stuff, people talking in the background. Mm. I was even like this writing songs. It'd be like, talk radio in the back and mm-hmm. I'm just writing a song like I've got these like dic- dictation dictaphone tapes of like AM radio in the background mm. and like you know it's um, it's kind of like when I, I saw a documentary about Basquiat and he just had like the TV blaring in the mm. background all the time it's just like this sort of stimulation thing it's like yeah. uh, it's like uh, being propelled Yes. By other people's effort or something. Yeah. yeah. Borrowing the will of the uh, the recording or mm-hmm, uh, I don't mm-hmm. know how to put it. It's like a, it's a strange impulse. I think maybe, I mean, to get personal, it may have a kind of um, maybe an antidote to loneliness from living alone mm-hmm. to like have people sort of present in the house. I yeah. remember like right after lockdown, Tony did, um, Tony Maserati did um, like a live stream from his studio. Mm-hmm. And I tuned in live. It was on my big TV. His voice was sort of filling the place. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Yeah. It's like so much Tony coming across, man. It's so yeah. cool that these people get to sense, you know, what Tony's like very much in the way like Kate Tempest comes off on that record mm-hmm. or like J. Cole comes off. Like for me, the kind of, it's funny because it's, I'm just now realizing that um, it could be a podcaster or a mix engineer live streaming from the studio or um, Trio Mondali in, in Georgia or, um, you know, um, Efia DeVisa, you know, live streaming from her loft, um, mm-hmm. singing, performing, or, um, yeah, or even these recordings where the personality is very much on display. Um it all sort of has, I'm attracted to it all in very much the same way. Mm -hmm. It's that intimacy that's created at a distance. Mm -hmm. This is so interesting to me. And it always, it's like a whole dimension that I care about. Mm -hmm. It's like some some podcast, like YouTuber, podcaster can talk right into the mic, great cameras, and it's just not real. It's like, Mm. it seems prepared. It seems like there's hidden agendas. And it's like, Mm -hmm. it's just not honest Mm -hmm. 
and when it's and when that connection is just so broadband, it's so high resolution, so open. Um, there's a singer in India, a young woman. I think her um, Songbird Tunes is her. Um, mm-hmm. She's amazing. Her Instagram, mm-hmm. just s- s- sitting in front of the microphone, smiling and singing. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It's like is she doing that for me? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's so personal. It's yes. so open. Mm-hmm. So available. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's, yeah, I don't know. I forget how I got onto that. The, now, last, but. the last couple of days, Mirabelle and I have been writing songs. I've uh, been playing guitar and Mirabelle and I have been riffing on lyrics and melodies and really? just watching her sing. That I just described it before I left the house to Sydney. Sydney was taking a nap and I just described like her, just exactly that, that openness, that sort of, you know, beautiful open availability to to singing a note and just like really not not pushing it out of you mm. not shouting it at at the person who's listening mm. not like attaching sort of a, a sense of self to it just like mm. just singing out a, a made up sentence about you know <laughs> whatever that's great um, and uh, mm. yeah, what did we write the song about today it was about can't remember something maybe about me going to work or something it mm. was like just trading lines back and forth, you know, That's great. and playing, playing chords. And Ellie brought up her drumsticks and was drumming on the bed. And nice. It was great. Yeah. It was really, but that, that childlike, I think so much of what we're doing is trying to sort of rediscover that. Yes. That childlike play, that free play that's, that's uninhibited. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're, we're always talking to engineers and producers and writers about getting to that place where you're you're not second guessing and you're just you're just putting it out there and, yeah. and enjoying the feedback of it you know the the coping the, with the technical drama is just so you know when people are driven they will tolerate they will tolerate things mm-hmm. and what you see is this kind of because of the lack of guidance and the lack of understanding you see a um an assumption that that's just the way it is Mm -hmm. low-end ambiguity and struggle Mm -hmm. it's just the way it is Mm -hmm. um weird hacks weird workarounds Mm -hmm. people are incredible the way they adapt Mm -hmm. um the kind of techniques people use to get the final products they do always impresses me Mm -hmm. you know I mean, the first time I noticed something like this, it was like NS10s and watching the driver move and knowing what you have down there mm-hmm. without ever hearing it. You mm-hmm. know, it's stuff like that. It's like, really? Um, um, but yeah, I mean, I think this thing about information not going in anymore, like I, I mean... I've become so available to the depths of our uh, aesthetic experience. Like to just put a record on today with a client and like, I'm over there like, fuck man, where are the tissues? (laughs) You know what I mean? I'm like so ready for it. Um, Beautiful documentaries like that one about Fogo Island Mm -hmm. that we all need to watch. Graham uh, uh, watched it with me and, um, it's an incredible story about a community and um, revitalizing a remote community um, and bringing international art and designers. And um, it's just an incredible story, but can take in things like that. Um, but I really feel like this is not a moment for me to study. I feel like this is a moment to put things into action. Mm-hmm. And so like the taking in of information, it's like, okay, yeah, I've been doing that for 20 years. What I haven't been doing is building something tangible, mm-hmm. something with a name, something that something that we can be a part of, you know, something like you mean something outside of the of what the of what the podcast is and conversations or yeah, I mean yeah, I think so. I mean I, because for me the podcast is a layer of community. Mm-hmm. It's it's actually the podcast is a documentation. It's it's a a kind of documentation of the philosophical discussion that's going on in a community mm-hmm. that we're a part of. Yes. We are all loosely affiliated, 
mm-hmm. right? We're not, you know, the professional audio recording industry, um, you know, that subset of the of the pro audio community is not tightly knit. Um, we're sort of loosely affiliated. Yes. And this, this conversation is a kind of... Um, you know, what would be happening in salons a, a couple hundred years ago yeah. or in cafe, cafe culture kind of thing, right? Um, it's a layer. It's a component. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I think, of, I think of the podcast as a kind of proof of concept that we can organize and do a thing mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we can build on that and that's good, but it's not a complete, it doesn't completely address the needs of the community. No, no. Um, and I, and I see I see myself in a like where my thoughts go um, when I think about when I think about you know as consultants we are helping people make decisions um, that will serve their greater goals and their greater hopes and ambitions and and also transcend obstacles. But when I think about how to most effectively do that it's around these basic human needs and around this simpler stuff it's around deeper levels of community it's about where to learn and how to learn mm. and, and, and a culture of learning a culture of curiosity um, a culture where gear and tools are in their sort of right place mm-hmm. in the, in the hierarchy of things mm-hmm. And, um, and, and, you know, and that, that, that kind of subculture, I'm much more interested in the architecture of, and I, I say subculture as part of a trajectory, because I really think um, that audio engineering in general as a field is sort of skewed by... Um, the power and sway of commercial interests in contrast to the ideas that really serve art and humanity and the, the richness of our future and all that kind of thing. Um, they're not aligned, mm-hmm. you know, they're in conflict. Very um, much so, yeah. And so that's where my thoughts go. My thoughts go, man, a whole generation of people are becoming interested in this career where do they go? Who do they trust? What institutions can they look to? Mm-hmm. How will they be shaped? What what frustrations can be um, designed out of their future? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know. Um, so if I think about like bang for the buck or how to best spend one's time, that's where my head goes. Hmm. You know. Yeah. It's not like how many studios can I drive across town to. You know, it just becomes like um, inefficient (laughs) or something. So, like, I don't, I'm not so compelled to to pursue and develop that side of things. Yeah, to put your hands on specific rooms or specific sets of speakers or yeah. So it's a it's a sort of cultural. It's it's identifying. I mean, I think I think what we've started to do over the last couple of years, three years maybe, is identify good ideas. And I think what I'm very sort of obsessed with is the idea of of memifying and making these ideas sticky so that yeah, they're shared. That's what I love about your your taste in in presentation is like this looking for a holistic message that resonates emotionally. Yeah. It's hooky. It's easily transferable from one person to the next. Yeah, I think the truth is a given. We, we you know, we we want we want what we say to be factually correct, Sound, or as yeah. as as best you know. Some some of these things are subjective in a way, or or artistic. So maybe there's no fact, but as as best we can, we want to be grounded in, you know, well reasoned, well reasoned, and, yeah. and 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 we're open to 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 discussing that at any time. We're, we're wide open to an upgrade on any of our ideas. <laughs> um, but in terms of having something to say, I see like something like this morning, it's like, it's like a gig. It's a kind of a, it's a kind of an improvisation based yes. on a bunch of rehearsals that we've done 
individually yeah. and collective, you and I together. Yeah. And you're you're looking to communicate a set of ideas and a set of possibilities and a set of a kind of a vision for the future with as much sort of potency as possible. You know, you want it to be enthralling and uh, intoxicating and exciting and unnerving. Mm. And um, you kind of wanted to shift things for people. You know, I don't, I don't, wa I wanted to, to have an impact, you know. And um, so the, 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 just g gathering the ideas, refining them, integrating them, but then making them so that they're ready to travel, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think in different ways, we're all, we're all, all four of us do some version of that. Mm. Um, you know, I think you and I are the most probably similar in the way that we see things. Mm -hmm. And John's got a different kind of high energy, sort of no bullshit approach, which kind of sometimes can be thermonuclear and very um, energizing and sort of cuts through, mm. you know, deliberation and bullshit. Yeah. And then Michael's got this very systematic... Mm -hmm. um, Funnel... Yeah, it's it's very broad based. It's very um it's built like bricks. Bricks, brick, 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 all the way up until you have a structure that is that is um sort of robust and uh consistently delivers, you know, a system that 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 is built in that's that's built in reasoned well and built so that it works maximally and functions well. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm I'm sort of a little bit more excited about things that are that are um, maybe less systematic and more potent, more poetic, or more yes enchanting. And I think that combination is that you know the f the four of us at the table. That's that's why we've been able to sort of yeah you know learn so much from each other. Is these different approaches all have some merit, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, they're all needed mm -hmm. to, like you said, to have ideas that spread, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think that as we, as certain people level up very quickly because they have better ideas or they have better rooms or they have better workflows, you know, where it's, you know, we're changing people's other people's peer group. They're watching friends of theirs level up, and they and they they see that the change it can make, and that's yeah. So that that has a, a really important. These these clients are are or people in our world. They're having sort of leadership roles in their groups of friends, and mm. and um, in terms of like, hey, this is possible, and um, mm. you know, so that that. That sort of second or, second order effect or that knock on effect is very important, you know. Mm. Um, and and we're sort of seeing that bubble right now. I feel I'm interested in in what you said about this moment of kind of maybe slowing down an input and looking to output in this framework stuff, with the podcast as being one part of it. For me, I I feel maybe it's a different way of expressing the same moment, but I sort of feel like. I'm not in a, I'm not, for me personally, with my work or with the ideas that we're exploring, I'm not in a moment of like significant change, but I do feel like I'm in that sort of moment before the pot boils, you know, before you see the bubbles, mm. they're sort of like things are stirring and, and, and there's, it, the, the, the pot is heating mm. and it's very um, consistently things are, are happening and um, but I'm not sure what the next moment looks like because I've, yeah, I've been surprised by the last couple. That's what know? I mean. When we start, like when we get together, the four of us, um, when we have put put our heads, when we have had our heads together about various um, projects or directions to take, um, you know, we have a way of sort of testing ideas and seeing if they're valid. Mm -hmm. You know, part of my... Um, settling on uh, agreements, my, my work agreements and contracts and stuff for this year was a group effort mm -hmm. um, in, in just that thing, testing mm -hmm. certain ideas and mm -hmm. pressure testing them, seeing if it's viable to do now or should we wait or is that mm -hmm. part of a bigger thing later or whatever. Um, 
But I think that's that's kind of we don't know how these things are all these various ideas we have are going to hold up mm-hmm. under scrutiny when we actually go to to start things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I expect to be surprised mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. by where we start and what we do and yeah. that sort of thing. I mean, these workshops are interesting. Um, you know, the ones we're doing already, and that could be expanded on to the entire mind map of the audio engineer's needs. And suddenly yes. you have a whole suite of workshops that become, looks a lot like course load. Mm-hmm. You know, well, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, that's something we can create. The, you know, I one of the things I struggle with, uh, I alluded to before, is this idea that we can we can go into rooms, you, Kyle, and I, Rory, we can go into a room and affect, on a scale of one to 10, let's call what we do as a 10. Like, what if you could teach people to get themselves to a six or a seven? Mm-hmm. What does that look like with thousands of people on fucking rooms around the world? Mm-hmm. You know, what is the culture that emerges from that? Mm-hmm. A new kind of common ground. Mm-hmm. You know, a new set of values to rally around. Mm-hmm. Um um, watching people, <laughs> watching people invest in their own traps, is oh, difficult for me. It's kind of heartbreaking. Yeah, I don't want to call it tragic because again, we're just making records here. But there's a, it's a tragic shape it has a tragic shape to it. Yeah, where you see problems that can be avoided, and you see people stepping right into them. Mm-hmm. Um. You want to do something about it. You want to spare them the frustration. But mm-hmm. um, that's why, again, like, I think, like, the teenage brain. Uh, I forget who, who we were talking to. Um, something about it being too late. Oh, I think it was Josh, John's assistant, um, Josh De Guzman. Um, saying, like, yeah, by the time you're people are 28 it's like it's too late um meaning that the teenage brain has sort of solidified mm. and so like the teenage brain is like this supercharged learning machine it's like um i mean the brain until you know slows down you know 25 and 29 it's all set up um for the most part but the teenage brain is like particularly powerful mm-hmm. and if you can engage people then and they don't have the bad habits yet they don't have the perverse incentives baked into their logic structure yes Um, self-defeating approaches and they're hungry and they're looking to and they're seeing the truth in the Mm -hmm. things that are being shared and taught um and they're reaping the rewards like hef moraeus engineer in london um, came up with Trevor Horn, working mm-hmm. with Trevor Horn. He's um, working with PMC now. We sort of have twin roles, me here in LA and 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 half over there in London. Mm-hmm. Um, very much community relations sort of oriented roles. Um, and he also manages some of these drill and grime artists mm-hmm. and he's got some young producers. They've only been at it like 18 months. Yes. But they came up on QB1 XBDs in a tight little control room um, at a studio in the middle of London. And, you know, their growth, I mean, they're like very well known, well regarded, doing great. And they went and looked at maybe some studios closer to home where they could get some work done. They didn't have to come all the way into town or whatever. And they were appalled mm. by what they heard. They were like, how does anyone do this? <laughs> like they've only worked on the giant monolithic PMC rig mm. that just gave them every bit of detail. And that's mm. how they learn to craft things Yes, without the resistance and without the translation layer. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so, you know, I think about, I think about young people mm-hmm. most of the time now, mm-hmm. you know, happy to rescue you know, more experienced engineers and producers and such. Um, yeah. Love doing that. But for me, it's like, there's just generational opportunity. Yeah. And what about when that generation is, they get their legs in a couple of years and then mm-hmm. what they can do for the, you know, the generation coming right behind them. 
Mm -hmm. the people who assist them or intern under them. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that look like three generations down the road? You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's where my head's at. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. It's ambitious and scary and it's, it's. I mean, we've talked about this off mic, but that, yeah, I, I definitely think sometimes we, we have this kind of like, who are we to, who are we to take on any of this, you know? And, we've sort of explored that terrain and it always comes back, but I have to say I, it's a pretty fleeting feeling that I yeah. have because I've yeah. kind of had this whole, this grand ideas thing since I was little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have to like, you know, that's part of the inner ethic or the kind of mental hygiene in a way is yeah. like, yeah, there are doubts and they're like, mm -hmm. who are you to do such and such? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you find yourself sitting at a table with certain people and you're like, Gee, how the fuck did this happen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm sure that will continue to happen. There will be surreal moments and, and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But yeah, I think that imposter syndrome, uh, you know, I like sort of Seth Godin's jam on that. It's yeah. sort of being the consequence of trying something new. Doing new things. Will yeah. the new thing work? You know, it's really mm -hmm. an extension of that mm -hmm. doubt. Um, yeah. Um. No, I'm I'm fine with it, and and yeah, like you, seeing the, seeing how quickly some of the younger people that we're working with can improve and level up what they're doing, it's really it's really inspiring, I and mean, it gives me energy as someone yeah. who's been doing it a, a yeah. minute. You know, I like this last couple of weeks working with some younger clients. I've had a really almost perfect mix of work come in. Like the last couple of weeks, it's like pretty much exactly what we conceived when we were going through this in the last, mm. in the last, uh, you know, maybe two months ago when we were really going deep on what, on my motivations and stuff and mastering, but it's like this perfect mix of like legacy artists that I grew up listening to young, young pop mixers and producers, like working fast, working hard, iterating like quickly and indie stuff. Like I'm doing a, one older artist, like beautifully recorded with orchestras mixed by a really high level mixer, you know, pop stuff um, hip hop stuff. There's like a really good, a really good mix. It's exactly sort of the sweet spot. Uh, the record that, that mm -hmm. might be coming today that I talk, told you about before we got on mic, yeah. like really excited to be working with that artist again. And, and, um, um, but the energy from the younger clients is really, you know, the, the, um, Say that the orchestral record I'm doing with a with a more established older older artist, the whole process of working through that of of dealing with management and label and and mixer is super grown up and and you know good budgets and everything is happening on a nice schedule and it's very pro and that's very gratifying. But when you watch young clients, the quick iterative changes that are happening, like watching across just a couple of months how their mixes are improving or their understanding of what they're doing, or maybe my little bit of feedback, you know, or them hearing masters, sort of them integrating that learning back into the mixing. It's really satisfying. It's really like, it's a really good source of energy for me, you know? Mm. So I'm with you. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm down to sort of just keep investing in that, in that, in those younger clients and, and listeners and people, you know? Um, and figuring out how we can do it sustainably and what the, what the, what the structures are, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've, the, you know, the, the, I asked the question on Instagram the other day, like how deep does community go? Mm. And if I think about the best part of my childhood, um, it would have to be like having family and cousins and aunts, uncles, grandparents, great-grandparents, all sort of local, mm. um, the sort of rhythm of the week and the year, mm -hmm. and then having the extended church family, that kind of support. It's interesting, like as a kid, you know, that's just the way it is. You don't have a reference point. Yes. And you get out into the world and you see how how other people live. You travel a little bit, you see how people are in other places. You get a little more perspective. Um Having, like, in this neighborhood, I know a few people, right? 
so I can walk down the street. We can run into an architect like we did that mm-hmm. dinner. Or mm-hmm. We can run into the shop owners or the you know the um, people around. Um, I know a few people. Right, John's here. Michael mm-hmm. was here until recently um, on the block. But what does it look like when you know <laughs> a lot more people you live mm-hmm. with? As I remember in New York, just like I would leave my apartment on the Upper West Side and I would go outside. It was like a social desert, <laughs> just mm-hmm. surrounded by people. Mm-hmm. Um, what does it mean to live around people you don't know? Yes. To walk past people who are indifferent to you all day. Mm-hmm. You know, like what is that? How does that compare to the way we've lived for thousands of years? Yes. What does it mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so if I combine, if I combine the sort of what I imagine the depths of community are, which is like much more like village, it's much more village life where people know each other. And mm-hmm. in order to stay integrated, you really have to level up the quality of your character. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can't be a douchebag. You can't be yeah. a fucking dick. And stay a part of that thing. Yeah. You know, it dema- in the same way monogamy demands of you your better self continually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what does it look like in a more tightly knit community? I mean, obviously, if you look at modern examples like, um, oh God, like the Amish or something, there's mm-hmm. like a, there are obvious problems with that mm-hmm. setup, but obvious advantages, right? Um the raising of a barn or like whatever. Yeah. You know, there are all these things that are just sort of automatic. Like um, there's actually neurological work being done now around uh, exposure to nature where they're taking, you know, the sensory devices out into the woods and Mm. tracking what happens in people's brains. And they're sort of noticing this three day effect where, um, the brain waves change Mm. and you actually have a more prominence of alpha waves, which is, you know, that's, that's what people like to see uh, from expert meditators. Yes. This kind of calm awareness, clear, open awareness. That's calm. Mm. It's not sleepy or whatever. Right. It's this, it's this sort of, um, I don't know, like Goldilocks zone in terms Mm -hmm. of neurological behavior or uh, activity. Um, there are these sort of automatic effects that happen when human beings are sort of in a quote unquote natural environment. And until we've in, in, uh, innovated on what nature has provided, um, seems to me that looking at our evolutionary past, looking at our, our history is, um, the best place to start right? Um, exposure to the visual, a complex visual field that is a forest or a natural landscape has different neurological impact to seeing all the right angles in, you know, living in a box, Mm -hmm. you know, tiny apartment in downtown Los Angeles, say, Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and associated with depression and anxiety, all this stuff, Mm -hmm. right? Um, so if I combine, this idea of sort of nature being um, where humans are comfortable, right? Exposure. Mm-hmm. It's. I mean, the studies are showing t- um, um, dose-dependent relationship between exposure to nature and m- markers of well-being. So, like, if you visit a city park for 20 minutes, like once a week. There's this sort of amount, but the more time you spend, sort of the better the out- outcomes look. Who knows what all the other uh, other li- underlying factors are and confounding factors are, but let's just say say for the sake of argument that nature is good for us. Exposure to nature, being in nature is good for us, right? Um, and let's assume that living with people we know is good for us. Um and investing in young people is good for us mm-hmm. <laughs> collectively and individually um, starts to look a lot like college campus mm. somewhere pretty, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and that's where I, I start to get like this real 
sort of juice <laughs> mm. for how to have the kind of impact we're talking about. Yeah. You know, how to like funnel the energy into a lifestyle, a way of living, mm. not just like a way of thinking. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's ambitious. It's not hard for me to fantasize about. Yeah. What is the first step to that? To that? A mission. Getting people on board, mm. you know. It's having a clear mission and recruiting partners. and Yes. You know. Individual people you mean or partners as in groups no and yeah, no companies idea. and yeah. all that mm. who has a it really i mean to me the whole thing boils down to shared fate yeah yes you know so whoever's involved who shares the fate so we know? say we say of your the three criteria you just laid out so there's investing in young people there's living knowing the people you live near or with you know, and then there's nature. So it's like in terms of our immediate orbit or the, 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 the people that we work with and the community that we're, that we're building already, it's like, well, okay, so we should be doing what we can to build the, and, and we talked about it a couple of weeks ago on, on Mike, how much pleasure it gives us to see different people on our network connecting directly, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Eduardo in Mexico City connecting with JC Dirks or yes. whoever, these people who who met via our our world or met via John yeah. or via Matt Rad or, you know, and watch them connecting across the board. You know, increasingly when I mention someone's name in the community to someone else, they're like, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. we're, we're homies, we're good. Yeah. Like, and that, that, so building that out and then building some sort of getting into nature element to what we do, even in the short term, like we've talked about this hike once a week or whatever. I was just, yeah. just thinking about it yesterday because I hiked and I spoke to, as an aside, I spoke to our three workshop winners, if you want to call them winners. Oh, wow. So we had, um, yeah, I'll go on this riff for a second. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. we had... I don't know any of this yet. We did, we did our AMA last week and we... I suggested early on that one of the formats we could explore was the idea of live workshopping people with the four of us. And Spider and I do workshops all the time, sometimes with Kyle too, where we, the unfuck workshops like we described earlier. Um, and obviously Michael and John have a ton to bring to that sort of space. Um, so the idea is that for the next three months, we are going to have a rolling format once a, you know once every week we're going to change the 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 setup so in a in a four week cycle we're going to go a week where it's the four of us talking or in this case the two of us uh, a week where you have an expert guest and we've got our next two lined up um I haven't announced them yet but I think we could um and then a week where we do an AMA and a week where we do a live workshop so the live workshop is basically a lot like what we do with Unfuck which is we get someone on the line, like um, on a Zoom, and they're they're talking and with us, and we are going in on every aspect of their work life, their career, their ambitions, their gear, their mindset, their diet, their their practices, their ideas about themselves, about where they're going, their ideas about what the music industry is, or if they only had this box, or if they only knew this guy, or if they could get their mixes to this guy. All of that, everything is on the table, and. Um, so we put that out there and 50 something people Ooh. responded to the DMs and awesome. I printed them at home on my laser printer, laid them all out in a, in a, a line and used a random number generator online to pick three people <laughs> and DM them and said, hey, can we jump on the phone? So this week I had calls with, uh, yesterday I had calls with um, Jose, uh, who is in... I'm going to mix up the places. I think Jose is in Santa Maria, California. Uh, I think he goes by Cosmic Dissonance. And then there was Brian Dane Hansen, uh -huh. who is in Atlanta. He shouted this out today. And then yeah. there was one more. Uh, I'm going to get the name because, I, because I'm saying all the names. Pedro Paz, who is in Mexico City. 
and and I had three great conversations in a row. So I was on my hike, and because of the cell coverage up there, so it's in the hills behind uh, behind Pasadena Altadena, where I where I walk, where I've walked with you when we walked on Christmas Day, yeah. um, and where I'll often walk with with different listeners um, and clients during COVID. So I was up there, and I had to stop sort of on this overlook so that I had cell coverage. But I had three great conversations in a row with these mm. with these young people. All three of them very early on in their in their all um, working day jobs and you know looking d- down the road or studying in school and looking down the road to a career in this. Mm. So it's going to be really interesting to sort of go go in with these young people. It's it's really a layup for what you just described. It's like we're mm. we're gonna we're gonna invest two hours, the four of our brains in in leveling up these young people and seeing what we can do to to mm. support their ideas and. Uh, um, so yeah, it, but, but the, uh, I was thinking on the walk after I finished talking with the guys, I walked for an hour and I was thinking, you know, it's time to set up the weekly, the weekly hike. And now that we're kind of COVID numbers are down and most people are vaccinated. It's like, we can get 10 people together at 7am on a Wednesday. Hike club. Yeah. And it's just, Hey, whoever shows up, we leave at seven sharp yeah. and pair off and we'll just just riff and talk and hang out and, That's excellent. you know, um, so maybe, maybe I've just announced it. I'll, I'll pick yeah, a day. A weekly? And, and I think weekly. Five, yeah, I, I think we Every week, two weeks? Something like that. Month, yeah. I mean, it, you know, I don't need to be there every week if it's not possible. Mm. Uh, if there's two people, you've got, you've got a group and, yeah. and go. You've got uh, a quorum. <laughs> and yeah, and, it, and if there's one person, it's a beautiful hike. Go yeah, hike, yeah, you know, yeah. you're a grown up. You can handle this. Yeah. You got a phone, you yeah. know, bring some water. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I'm thinking about the baby steps towards this, these ideals that, that you've laid out. And it seems, you know, our, this workshop format is, is an hour direct work with, with Unfuck. And of course, lots of other conversations and things we're across is, um, including with people like Graham, is investing in the young people, building the community and sort of, as we emerge out of, out of COVID and, and the lockdown, these sort of get togethers you know, would become increasingly important. And then maybe the nature aspect of yeah. just getting out on the bike or getting, getting, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm stoked to get together with Kean and his wife soon and yeah. with their kid, you know, it's like for them to meet Sydney and the girls and just like build on these relationships that we've developed, you know. My birthday's coming up and mm. I've been thinking about an outdoor event and, mm-hmm. I'm talking with Manuela about the garden, maybe doing um, a garden party mm. on the on the Sunday, yeah, um, yeah, end of June, and um, you know, as a way of sort of um, inspiring further gatherings, mm-hmm. you know, mm. like I kind of imagine, like the outdoor barbecue thing, just seems so obvious to me as a thing to do, mm-hmm. just meet and. Fresh air, yeah, and good people, and, yeah, and you know, finding if anyone has ideas on a place to do it. I know we've had people offer their their yards and mm-hmm. their backyards and things, and I mm-hmm. think that's cool. I wonder if there maybe isn't. Um, maybe that's a great place to start, to mm-hmm. be honest. Um, but I'm thinking a little bit more about like the longer vision of that. Mm-hmm. Like, can we? form an alliance with another organization that has facilities or can we, mm-hmm. what can we, you know, if anyone has a castle or a, a state home, they want to donate to the cause. <laughs> be happy to have a conversation. All our castle owning listeners. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, I think like combining a working studio with a real kind of college atmosphere, um, where you have new new folks coming in who are sort of in this college level, and I say college because it's like it's it's a group of young people mm. like living together. Mm. It's not like oh, I'm in in the North Valley and I'm in Venice and I'm over mm-hmm. here and it's you know it's a, a lot more integrated for that period in yes. my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but you be entering into a working studio environment so that the 
the habits and the intuitions are being developed around the actual work, mm -hmm. not a theoretical version of it. Yes. And that disconnect that we find from so many audio students when they actually arrive here to work and make records, mm. they're sort of, um, there's a lot to unlearn and there's a lot to learn. And, yes. it, and when I say it's too late, they're like in their early 20s and their teenage brain is mm. not all fired up. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's un so much undoing that happens. Mm. So why not just like do or lay the foundation? Yeah. You know, um, and so if you if you imagine not only like this this college group, let's say it's like a one year program, two year program, whatever, um, you are graduating out of that into a com a community that is cohered. Mm -hmm. You know, you're now assisting a previous student, and you're in this culture mm -hmm. of continued learning and continued leveling up and the little pockets of leveling up, like mm. the groups of three and four and five that get together and yes. help each other ratchet up. It's just a network of that. Um, and, you know, offering exposure to like, oh, this is, you know, in this first year, you'll spend time with a score mixer and you'll spend time with a sound designer and you'll spend time in the working environments, you know, mm. um, to have that sort of experimentation and to find, and also, you know, all, all kinds of opportunities to, to be exposed here in LA to all kinds of things, right? Yes. That'll be valuable. But um, it's not just a school. Mm. It's not a school divorced from community. It's not a school where you go and then go off somewhere else and meet new people and start all, all over again. Like to me, this just sounds like a nightmare. Mm. You leave where you came from go to a school somewhere for a few years and then move on somewhere else. Like, I don't know that we really understand the toll of that. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like this sort of disconnection from a place. I really would love for this community to also be a place, to have the power of place mm. behind us, not just theories and values and mm. ideas. It's weird that something so simple and historically normal yeah sounds ambitious now yeah you know it's it's fighting against the force of a modern freedom, culture a and freedom to a, do whatever yeah the freedom to cut out when it gets hard or when mm. things get unpleasant with another human or mm -hmm. you know it's it's those choices didn't exist until yeah. very recently for people yes um but but yeah i mean i imagine like a a what does it look like to have a thriving community of professionals with um, shared interests, shared goals, and a shared fate of some kind. Mm -hmm. You know, that whole group is has an interest in the next generation coming in. Mm -hmm. How can we refine their onboarding? Yeah, you know, year after year, give them access to our best insights and the best tools. Yeah, and and. Yeah, level them up and make the make make, make them, everyone stronger. Make them better than us, mm -hmm. you know? Like that's I think this is again, just tapping into a primal I mean, we all have this primal desire to protect innocence and invest in young people and to mm -hmm. share and to teach and um you know, this isn't reinventing the wheel. Mm -mm. This is sort of repairing what's been uninvented. Yes. Yeah, kind of a a return to something. Return to form. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine like the the Noah Snyders playing a role in this. Massive, yeah. You know, um the different figures and the and the different sort of professional roles they play and the insights they offer. Um That's why I love the idea of shared fate. It's like, well, the vi the value of audio engineering in the recording industry, right? That was one of the first things that came up in the when we were meeting up here in person. It was like, why don't people care about engineering? Why are they so willing to like just circumvent the value structure of audio engineering to put records out? Like, mm -hmm. what is the 
What are we missing? Like, what is it that we're not doing? What is, like all the questions that came from that for me were less about a campaign to raise awareness of the value of audio engineering. And it was like, well, how do we actually engineer better mm-hmm. in a way that makes it so obvious? Um, I think there's probably room for both, but, yeah, um, you know, a PR kind of thing and also... Again, this orientation, it's like, well, if all the artists are like, well, you know, if there isn't an engineer there, what are we doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, or, or are we making something worthy of capture? Yeah. You know, I mean, what we played this morning when we were doing our show and tell, you're playing these sort of peak hmm. captures of peak. Yeah. Melody Gardo, J. Cole. The, oh, Joey. yeah. So those are demonstrations of yeah. what happens when it all comes together. Yeah. And the pa- again, it's not linear. It's not like if you have all the pieces right and the engineering is lackluster, mm-hmm. that it's like you get a 90%. It's like, no, no you get like a 40%. But when it, it's yeah. right, suddenly you're like yeah. on a hockey stick kind of yeah, curve. Yeah, it's, you know? it's, it's, well, it, that's, that's when we're into the realm of magic and stuff that's that's inexplicable and beyond Beyond words and Def- beyond, yeah, it defies our intuitions. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it's it just it's it's the bit where where language and objectivity and numbers stop, <laughs> and we're into things changing in you that you can't, yeah, that aren't expressible other than through poetry or art or music, you know. And, and the undeniability, like you get a crew work making a record, and somebody sings a thing, and the whole room turns around and is like, "What? The? That's the kind of truth yeah. that we're talking about." Very much so. Yeah. Is that yeah. kind of undeniable thing, and it is subjective. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. but when it's collective and instant, it's like whoa. Yeah, it's it's. I'm sure it's culturally programmed yeah, and all and that. All, but but yeah. I mean, that's what we that's what we got. That's the that's the water we swim in. Yeah. So yeah. I'm down with that. Um. But yeah, the, you know, we've called it the Bauhaus of audio. We've called it a bunch of things, but mm. I think, um, to me, that's the sweet spot for impact. And for social positioning for someone like me, Mm. you know, it's sort of like the design of the way young people are onboarded into the field. Mm. Um, It's something I feel like, I don't want to say a calling, but Mm -hmm. if I look at, if I look back and everything I've been interested in, like my natural um, attraction to certain ideas and the way the posture I assume in rooms with certain people, um, consideration for other people's experience, like whatever, you know, whatever strengths I have look to me as if they're pointed at something like it, Mm. like that. Yeah. And there are other, you know, there are other ways of transferring ideas and having an impact, you know, obviously, but to me, you know, in the blue sky, you know, way we do with clients mm-hmm. in during a during workshops. If I if I turn around and ask myself, like, if there was a hundred million dollars at my disposal, um, to point at this problem, mm-hmm. I'd be like, I don't know who else should do it. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel sort of uniquely seated, you know, between Maurice and between you, and like the kind of impact John's having, and the and Michael's capabilities, and the people we all have access to and like to, you know, mm-hmm. not to do it, not to mastermind it, but to to maintain the point of view of the kid in the design of a mm-hmm. <laughs> of a learning system. I I see it and and uh, it's production. I mean, it's, it's producing. I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's, it is it's, producing, and it very much yeah. overlays with with what we've talked about recently about sort of that really owning and occupying your space as someone with good taste with good intuition with with the sort of ability to to take in something and and offer something back that's useful mm. you know in in return so mm. I, if i play you something or show you something you can give me new context or mm. a, a note or um some input Mm. Um, that is useful, you know, that, that sort of continuous ability to sort of wield a, a, a subjective sort of critical eye in a useful way, you know. Mm. It's interesting because 
I'm not as clear right now on on the the longer. I, I'm really sort of happy to hear you say what you just said. Hmm. But last night I asked my wife, um, just before I went to bed, we're having a glass of wine, and I said, out of the blue, I, the question just came to my mind. I said, if you had to pick my, of all the things that I do that I do or I haven't done yet, if you had to pick my career for me, balancing everything, right now, what would it be? And she was stumped by the question. Like wow, she, and she was she was like, "What do you think I would have said?" I said, "I don't, I, didn't, I had no idea." But she she was like, "I would have to think about that." Workshopping with Sydney before bed—that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just a. Fu- it was a. It was an interesting question to me because you'd I run workshops, Rory. You yeah. do it in your sleep almost. Yeah, <laughs> because I was thinking about just this moment of feeling like this, like we described earlier in the conversation, this sort of surprise at some of the of the corners I've ended up standing on in the last year. And, you know, clarity around some aspects, but sort of discovery of others. And so I was in, sort of interested in what her opinion would be of that question. And she had no answer for me, you know. Yeah. So, um, you're capable of a lot. It's a hard thing to answer. But I yeah. do, when I see you with people, you're such an intuitive counselor. Mm hmm. You know, and and you bring, you're so kind of convincing um, and believable and Mm -hmm. earnest. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of the impact comes from that, that we have. Yeah. You know, it's the willingness for people to to go on this journey Mm -hmm. with us comes, comes in part from that and you know, I've seen you do it in different ways, technical ways, you know, all these different dimensions that we talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a mode that when the, you know, I think it's the reason why the actual acoustics work is pale in comparison to the counseling side of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe counseling's too strong a word, but in the, in maybe just in like a less clinical sense, it's like, um, it is you're providing counsel to people. It's mm-hmm. you're counseling them. You're, um, you know, we always say, think of us as your decision making module. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but to make decisions, you have to gather the information to yeah. build the framework with which to define the compromises. Yeah, or arrive at them. Rather, yes, you yeah. know. So like, and the. So there's the getting the information and then there's the sort of explaining of the reasons and the the sort of education side. People saying, well, what should I do? And they're coming to you for counsel, Mm -hmm. you know, so maybe we shouldn't be too afraid of that word, but Mm -hmm. usually, yeah, we hear it in a clinical sense. Yeah, yeah. um, Or like legal, legal counsel. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, like I could see in a bizarro universe, Rory is a, you know, a psychologist, therapist, (laughs) or, uh, you know. It definitely feels like communication is a part of the future. You know, just being on mic and doing this has obviously sort of awakened that in me. I mean, I've always liked communicating, but I never had any any platform Mm. other than a one-on-one. So communicating effectively, finding better ideas, honing them, sharing them more effectively, mm. listening more effectively, as Michael has talked about so much recently. Mm. Um, that definitely seems like a part of the future, a big part. Um, and I don't know other than that. I know I'm enjoying mastering more right now than I have in a long time. I feel like I'm doing better work. Better work is coming in, sort of coming easier. I'm clearer about, mm. you know, I think, you know, one of the things we try and do with with clients is sort of unpack these internal conflicts and I had quite a few around sort of ambition for the work uh, you know sort of rubbing against the things I actually like to work on and sort of as as we've sort of unpacked and deconstructed some of those ideas I'm much more at peace with the kind of mix of work and the type of clients that I'm getting and the and the sort of how much joy I can get out of working with like 
a guy like Perry Farrell that I came up listening to and not worry that it's not Selena Gomez. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm really happy to have that as part of my work and like, and then working on other cool pop stuff with younger artists or whatever. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a healthy mix and I'm enjoying. Yeah. So I feel. I, I just see a limit to the solitary work you do. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. To meet the broader needs. You know? Yeah. That's, that's and, definitely. And, and to fulfill your, mm -hmm. what you're capable of. Yes. I think so too. Yeah. I, th I, I, it couldn't be. It couldn't be 60 songs a week, Sterling style. Yeah, you're not where, 14 hours a day in the cave and then go home. and Not no. not interested in that. You know, yeah. I, I sort of want to have maximum impact on a smaller set of work. Yes. And sort of do it in that more long form, deep dive, artful way that we've talked about. And that increasingly sort of clients are telling me they value Um and I'm getting better at recognizing when someone doesn't need that or want that or isn't really a right fit for me. Mm. Um, so opening up space for whatever these other things will be, you know. Um, and it definitely seems like communicating in person or with groups is is going to be part of it, you know. I don't know what it'll be like for us to get in front of 50 people or 100 people or, or 200 more. people. I yeah. mean, I, I imagine it'll be it'll be fun. And Yeah, me too challenging and sort of another yeah, new frontiers a, a new a kind of an upgrade for us you know mm -hmm. um managing the energy in the room and <laughs> the, and the, the the wayward questions and the uh -huh. you know all of that yeah um, i'm looking forward to questions it. only no statements <laughs> <laughs> um uh, yeah. Yeah, at least who was it said was it sam said at least at least sort of do a rising sound at the end of your <laughs> of your statement so that it sounds like a question. a question. Yeah, even yeah. if it isn't one. Yeah. I thought that was very funny. That is funny. Um Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's an interesting I feel like we're just in the middle of it right now. We're in the middle of the work and this new framework for the podcast for the for the next minute is is energizing and I think will give us a lot to chew on and there's a bunch of stuff coming up with Unfuck and a bunch of work in the studio and yeah. and the thinking and the listening and the, the reading goes on mm -hmm. and the conversations with people, you know, so it's an exciting time. It feels, it feels, I don't feel like I'm on the edge of something. I don't feel like I'm on the edge of a breakthrough. Mm. I feel like I'm in sort of the, the work part of it right I now. I feel like I just rode a wave that was about a year long. Mm. And I feel like the ray the wave has it's crested. And yeah. It's sort of in that. Yeah. A kind of a come down. That real. If, yeah. I feel like a bit more grounded and, and real after this last year. Mm. You know. And yeah. I think setting up this calendar and having like more of a, more of those lines on the road ahead of me, like we talked about last week or the week before. It's mm -hmm. like, um, I think it's actually having an, that effect as mm -hmm. well. Mm-hmm. It's just a bit less chaotic. Yes. And having that clockwork, a little bit of clockwork running in the background mm -hmm. um, is settling. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wonder, I wonder what people think about a kind of more deeply integrated kind of learning college school atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I wonder what people are thinking about that. And also like, what sort of remote a la carte offerings look like, you know, on the workshop level that, that could be had by anyone in the world, you know, yeah. it's like two different levels of engagement that are needed and, and is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm a bit more, and this is something I'm looking into more with these city, you know, listening to city planners and architects and um, some of these startup society folks, yes. like the Jordan Halls and his his cohort, mind bending, yeah, or the um, Jamie Wheel, or mm -hmm. you know, um, or the or the Schmachtenbergers, and, the, and and that sort of complex systems view of how mm -hmm. things are working now. Um, the um, the concept of. Uh, the resolution of the context of various relationships. So like, if I look back, I think about making records, like, um, you know, like doing a Autre Nouveau um, 
sessions at Avatar in New York with the Hazelrig brothers. Um, we get an Airbnb in the city, in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. and we're staying together. It's like a week mission. You live in, you have breakfast in the morning, you, you take in the Uber in, show up at Avatar, set up, Tabron's in. You know, like, um, I think it was Caleb, Caleb Levin maybe was assisting for some of it. Mm-hmm. And Omos is stopping by just for a visit. And um, OJ, um, who was working with Chris at Red Bull, like hooks up like a gospel choir to come down. And like, you know, you're on a mission with people and you're like mm-hmm. living it day in and day out. And all the meals and all the off, you know, the all the conversation that's happening you know, in the hallway or like after the session or whatever, all of that ex- extra information is the stuff that maybe we don't focus on. But it seems like there's an incredible amount of value in it yeah. in terms of our well being. Whereas if those were, if I were alone in my apartment, in stark contrast to that, if I were alone in my apartment and FaceTiming in for those sessions, not sharing the meals, not staying in the Airbnb in Brooklyn, not breathing the air, not being in the cat in the car with a cab driver making jokes. Like, if I didn't have any of that, like, what would the roar, reward be of making that record? Well, how would it 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 you know impact my well being? It's got to be a fraction, yeah. It's got to be a fraction, right? So I'm looking for more substantiated um, understanding or greater understanding of what's going on there, and I don't think it's entirely clear. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more than body language. It's more than, um, you know, I think things like FaceTiming with my brothers, my brother and his kids is not nearly as good as like, you know, wrestling with those kids, Mm -hmm. you know, in person, Mm -hmm. um, talking to my mom and dad on FaceTime Sunday mornings is nice. But I also carry with me all the years of the high resolution context Mm -hmm. that I can impute into that situation. Yeah. You know, it's like there's stuff that my memory associates with the interaction. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I were thinking about like, oh, let's invest in young people and let's do an online school, I'd be like, nah, bro. Mm. That's like, might even be like, a waste of time. Mm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. If, let's just say the same amount of time could be spent building something in person. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that that would be a a stupid move. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Just because of the quality of the context. I wonder... That makes sense. So the... We're in LA. We can get 100 people together or 200 people for for a notional small version of this school in a place, studying, learning, collaborating, living, eating. Hmm. And then, and acknowledge that that's the most potent version. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, And then some, with, with an understanding and an acceptance that it's a reduced bandwidth and a reduced quality of experience, some kind of remote team thing. So if you're, if you're the, the kid in Ohio or... Stockholm that we're in touch with yeah. that, we're, that we're helping you because something is better than nothing and um, but then I wonder if there's a third thing that can happen where so if you're if you're the kid in Ohio uh, and there just isn't another audio engineer who cares enough or who's full time or who's who's striving the way you are mm. in your area you you might truly be isolated yeah. Um, yeah. then is there a carpenter is there a painter is there a is there a is there something you can build in person a kind of a guild or a kind of a community or mm, a, mm, or like f- we talked about yeah. find your four yeah right and it's like okay well if you can't find you know people who are five foot eleven and a half with hair this long yeah, who are yeah, male yeah. and forty five yeah, yeah can we broaden the uh, yeah, like yeah. like uh, <laughs> Tinder dating it's like what about what about if we uh, if we broaden the age range here you know <laughs> and what about if we say okay so you won't find recording engineers who are into Smash Mouth. You know, right, right. what about if we find people who are into music? Yeah. Okay, so maybe there's a dude locally who likes classical music and mm. has a hi-fi. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Maybe yeah, he's yeah. worth hanging out with. Right, okay, right. 
Maybe it's photographer, the, the, a photographer and yeah. architect. Sure. Maybe there's a, maybe, you know, in the small town, 10 miles from where you live in the country, you can get five people together on a Friday night to talk about creativity in the broadest sense. An author, a yeah. journalist, a filmmaker, a whatever. Yeah. You know, so I'm just wondering if there's a, if there's some way for this remote to create tree the context to have a root to, oh to right have so you could get the yeah i mean and you could also front load an online program with a sort of retreat like a, a one a 10 day trip to la or mm -hmm. some kind of way to start it off where you get a kind of bonding thing with I other that, people in your group and then you said that was very important to you graham with mix with the masters that that sort of in-person collective experience shared experience the meals the the obviously being in a beautiful place in these, yes. these rooms and, and sort of a lot of people crossing this threshold of learning together. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's the, yeah. Marcellus and I, oh, yes. Dan Marcellus. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. So yeah, the thing is people being distributed all around the world is not going away. There's a need everywhere. So these strategies to sort of help people connect and level up. Um, you know, imperfect is better than not at all. Yeah. You know? That's something Jordan Hall, like I've been really interested in Jordan Hall's thinking is what is this distributed remote digital nomad lifestyle good for? And what is localist, deep rooted village commitment? kind of lifestyle good for mm -hmm. what to do in both of those levels mm -hmm. like you might find across the world thinkers who are just deeply aligned with where your head's at and you offer a great deal of value to each other mm -hmm. but you don't have the kinds of expectations with that person that you would with the people in your neighborhood yeah they're not going to show up with with a meal when you're sick yeah yeah, yeah. they're not going to provide that level of calm and comfort and and um confidence mm -hmm. going through the day and going through life and facing mm -hmm. difficulties like they're they're at a sort of different level of interaction mm -hmm. and optimizing how much of one's life should be spent in either domain um i think that that you know obviously i'm not making the case that these long distance relationships don't have value. That's, mm -hmm. of course they do. Yes. But let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> that they're the same as... That they're yeah. the same, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's what I'm seeking to understand more. Yeah. What is going on in this deeper level of context? It's so seemingly so important to our well-being. Mm -hmm. You know, why is Graham so tight with Dan Marsalis after a 10-day trip? Mm -hmm. What is going on there? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. You know, you do a studio project with someone and you work on it for months. It's like, why does that? Why is that so different to someone you might like share emails with or yeah, or like their images on Instagram? There's a there's a bond that builds and a and a kind of getting on the same frequency in the in the context of our client this morning or a client's client. You know, Again, that, I just that, think in terms of feedback loops, mm -hmm. like you can get a feedback loop going on Instagram mm -hmm. with someone you've never met, but is that like what it's like being in the room? Yeah. For seven, eight, 10, 20 years, 30 mm -hmm. years, like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. They're interesting questions, big they questions. Are. Yeah. Um, well, I think we're at two hours, 10. We've done it. I think we've done it. Yeah. I think it's a good a good recap. I'm I'm really glad to hear all the stuff that's on your mind. I didn't know all of that, you know. I, yeah, I mean it's it's emerging. I mean it's yeah. I mean I had this impulse with um with the whole um with the Maserati camp. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were all together in the building, it was like, well, it was easy to imagine kind of upgraded situation. Yes. But it, it was, you know, I I actually have like decks that I made of like what it would look like to have um, maybe a more formalized version of that. Mm -hmm. um, the sort of working studio with all the all the really good rooms mm -hmm. 
and the culture there and how people were onboarded. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I've been thinking about it a long time. Mm -hmm. It just sort of like keeps coming back and it keeps coming back into focus for me. Um, you know, given the requisite pieces sort of lining up again and then being in touch with the needs. Yeah. I just sort of like, just keep coming back to it. It just keeps coming back to get on the path earlier because you get so far off of the path. People are out there trailblazing and there is a beaten path mm -hmm. and people are just trailblazing unnecessarily. Yes. Getting cut up and mm -hmm. <laughs> moving slow and income isn't and forthcoming out, and, and, and falling consequently out of falling out of it. Yeah. yeah. F fall, like far too many people leave the field. Or doing a disservice to artists. That or are serve. never attracted to it to begin with. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. So, yeah. I yeah, mean, the, yeah. I love to know what people are thinking about how to get started and how to learn and what they imagine would be good or ideal or whatever. Um, and before we get off, I do, I want people to, I want to encourage people to check out that J. Cole record and check out this, um, what's it called again? Uh, Kate Tempest. No, the J. Or, Cole one. Oh, the J. Cole record. Let me, let me pull up the actual title. Yeah. So the, I want to mm -hmm. encourage people to listen to these records um, and sense the individual on the other side of the microphone. Um, this Kate Tempest record, Holy Elixir, right? Um, quiet yourself and perceive this human. Hey, we're going to have to edit that. We're going to edit that. Hey, well, yeah, one picket. Um, um, 1985? Yeah, 1985 intro to the fall off. It's the last track on the KOD record. So check that record, check this Kate Tempest, Holy Elixir, and what was the, um, Gardo? Melody Gardo, it's from her last record. There's two songs on there, there's one called Morning Sun, and the one that I usually play for people is, um, Once I Was Loved. Mm. Uh, the, let me find the album name, um, it's an incredible, incredible recording and incredible performance. The album is called Currency of Man. Mm. 2015 and uh yeah they're they're there's yeah i love that what what you're saying is just this the reality of the person there the person they're, yeah and the the nuance and the other side and and all of the color and humanity that's there yeah what it's they're a, doing with their voices yeah um the three very distinct personalities but the engineering is such that they are f like high bandwidth coming across. Mm -hmm. They're coming across um, the distance, you know, physically and the distance of time. Mm -hmm. You know, these are recordings obviously from the past as they all are. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they're reaching out with this sort of immediacy and clarity of character. Um which sort of loops us back to the, you know, what is, what, what do these shared experiences then do for us as a culture, as a group of people, as people who share these, these songs and share these, these messages, these feelings, you know, it's more, it's more than just a nice five minutes. It's like, oh, that was cute. No, that it's, was it seems important to share music. Not, not that we all, I mean, it's great. Again, the freedom is incredible, but it comes at a cost. The freedom to listen to any record you want can also be alienating. Mm -hmm. If we're not sharing enough common ground when it comes to music or whatever, mm -hmm. it's like, can we all bring something into focus together? A, a kind of virtual drum circle if we can't get it, if we can't get in rhythm with each other. <laughs> There's yeah. something that the yeah. village is not working. Yeah. You know. Well, cool, man. Yeah. This was great. Yeah. We'd love to hear from people. If you've got any thoughts, I think we kind of ranged far and wide tonight a little recap of of where we're at and the thinking but 
And we've got we've got more AMAs in the schedule upcoming, so mm. we'll be collecting more thoughts that people yeah. are thinking of. Yeah, typically it's like we're not asking for questions; we're really wanting to know what people are thinking about. And, yeah, uh, you know, maybe struggling with is is a strong way to put it, but um, even that, um, you know, or excited about if there's something. Yeah. It, uh, I was talking with Edsel last week, and he said some I, something came up about Balaji Srinivasan. And I was just like, man, I'm on a fucking kick with that guy, just reading all these essays and whatever. Yeah. And Edsel was saying that he went down the rabbit hole too. And not only that, he hipped his dad to it. And it's become like a theme between oh, he and his great. father. And I was like, man, man that's riffing great. with your dad about Balaji? That's amazing. Like, come on, that's just a good yeah. time right there. Yeah. So, you know, the if if there's something you're reading or or listening to or, or watching that we're not hip to. Yeah. We want to know about it. I'm really glad you point that out because I'm often in a problem solving frame of mind because mm -hmm. there are such important ones that mm -hmm. need attention. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's important. We do want to hear like what people are inspired by. Yeah. Triumphs and, and, and things that are exciting to, to them or, or yeah. that point the way to a better, a better future, you know? Yeah. And building a platform where we can share you know, again, it's like part of learning is being inspired. Um, and part of thriving as a community is is being inspired. Um, so having a way, platform to share records, you know, mm -hmm. various various forms of art, beauty, and truth. Yes. You know. Yeah. Um all right, dude. But this yeah. is great. Yeah. Till next time. We'll yeah. Have, we'll have John next week. Yeah. And we'll be back to uh, and, and Michael, Michael on the should road. Should be on the road. Yeah. Should be remote, remoting in. So the four of us will be back, and we'll be looking forward to guests. There's guests coming. It's going to be good. Yeah. We're excited. The 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 uh, AMAs will be great in terms of getting getting this feedback and questions and ideas and yeah stuff from the community. And then the the workshop I think is really going to lean on everything we talked about tonight because the three people that I talked to are all right at the start of their career. I love the idea of workshop episodes. Yeah. And I love that we're starting with young young folks. Yeah. 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 And I think it'll be a real treat for us to do it with John and Michael. There's going to yes. be a whole other yeah. level because we we have our thing that we do. Yeah. We have kind of a rhythm now, that we're, you know, so I think it would be really nice to have to have the guys on board and yeah. there may be some differing perspectives. Yeah. I, I'm excited about it for so many reasons. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to see. I want people to see what's sort of happening behind the scenes when we work with people, and then also like mm -hmm. the that sort of demonstration of openness and mm -hmm. you know people going there. Yes, you know. Yeah, I I asked all three for their permission. I was like, "This is we're gonna go there. You good? <laughs> you good with that? Because it's not like yeah." You know, it's not like, well, you should buy the Waves bundle and a, uh -huh. and a U8, you know, whatever. It's yeah. like, no, we're going there in terms of what you're hoping to achieve and big big ideas and big fears and yeah. all of that. So all three said yes. Right. So we're doing it. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Until next week. Conversations is produced and mixed by Dylan Seals. The Conversations theme was performed and recorded by the Hazelrick Brothers.